Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Harmony. I'm a twin flame expert helping twin flames around the globe face fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Welcome to my weekly glow show. Today's topic is risk versus rewards. And also, um, I wanted to bring in um, how this kind of channels into the 2222 portal today on um, February 22nd of 2018. And this is exactly what this portal is about. Are we willing to take enough risk and enough action of letting go of our old ways and doing what it takes for us to release our old patterns, our old ways of thinking, and all the things that don't no longer serve us purpose from the highest good so that we can shift into the rewards that are is our destiny and the place where everything will show up for our journey and where the magic happens so that we can reap those rewards, which is um, living in the new energy, living in the new um, vibration and um, the new frequencies. So, you know, we're closing the door to the past. That's what this portal is. We're closing the door to the past and we're going forward with the new templates. We've been testing them up to this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, if you're hanging on at this point, it's because you're, you're struggling to let go and to surrender. And it's time to start learning how to be and not do so much. And so that you can, you know, get on across this hurdle, get on across this hump, but it does take action. And your greatest resistance in that will be create your greatest reward and your greatest breakthrough. And so um, if there's today, I'm going to kind of talk about that transition of getting where you are to where you want to be through basically um, kind of like five pieces of that sharing with you through um, the a client of mine is going to, I'm going to interview here, here in just a second. So you can um, be able to see how she transitioned and she's going to give you some advice through that. But ultimately the first thing you have to do is start to really commit to focusing on yourself and taking accountability for yourself and really surrendering and letting go, which is basically an aspect of saying yes to your journey. And that would be the first way. And um, then it's, it is, becomes a process from there. And as we move across that bridge, it starts, then you have to trust in yourself. You have to believe in you and moving into that. Then you go, to, that helps teach you to elevate your trust meter. So you can learn to trust this process so that it's not like we're not going to have wavering, um, kind of faith, so to speak. And we have certain layers of this to go through and it's over as we go across that bridge. But the fact that we can trust what's in front of us and really try to stay detached from the outcome. And in this process, we um, also then along the way, when we stop having constriction from the concept and the idea of hanging on to all the resistance, it increases our frequency that opens up our channels of vibration to really receive these higher frequencies, these higher energies of this new energy coming through this portal of the 222. Too. And that helps us tap into our um, aspect of uh, connecting to our soul purpose and connecting to our spiritual gifts and being able to uh, hit those higher frequency to manifest from that level and from our heart's desires and not versus not necessarily our head. And that means we start to we need to trust our guidance. So first, we got to focus on us and say yes to the journey and believe in ourselves and find our truth, you know, and letting go to do that. Trust in yourself, trust in the process, trust in your guidance. But number five in that is you have to take action. So that means you have to take a risk to get the reward. And this is part of the evolutionary aspect of where we're at this timing of us mastering this trust aspect to be able to align with our destiny and to go on across the bridge and, and enter the promised land of magic. And so um, I am want to welcome you today. And now I'm going to share with you um, this, this process of um, how my client went through this exact process. So just stay tuned. So today being the 2222 portal, I told you I had a special surprise for you. I have actually a client of mine that is going to share with us today her journey across 
that bridge from you know where she's been to where she is now as far as taking these risks and reaping those rewards and so i'm very happy and excited to introduce to you today samantha so welcome samantha hello you know i want to really thank you for being big bold and brave to come here to share your story from the rawest deepest parts of your journey um, I just kind of want to share a little bit of background before we get going here and how it's been close to a year in April that you had started, not the, this whole Twin Flame journey, but the journey with me as far as walking this path in, a, in a, a place of saying yes to the journey and taking full responsibility and accountability for your part in this journey. So um, in that in itself, I'm very honored to have been able to see you go, as I talk about, from that rose to the rosebud and expanding into the fullest version of yourself. And of course, as all of us, we're still on that journey. But I want to thank you for showing up here today to share that with other people that are out there going through this, especially through this 2222 portal that is, you know, uh, we're hitting our greatest resistance here that is creating our greatest breakthroughs forcing us to test all these templates so that we can bring into form our rewards. And so thank you for showing up here today to help um, share your story with others. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So let's talk about kind of where you were whenever um, you first, we first start working together. And um, as I mentioned earlier, before we started this interview, we're, actually you know being shown how to get across that bridge i've been shown to share with people that's in this portal and trying to get through this gateway of where they are to they where they want to be as kind of five steps across and that being that we got to focus on ourselves we got to uh to do that we got to trust in ourselves we got to trust in this process we got to trust in our guidance and most importantly, we have to take action, and that's taking responsibility and accountability for ourselves. And where that starts is, is letting go and surrendering. And, you know, when you came to me for assistance, you were in a pit of despair, and you were in a place that, you know, was really needing to be, like, surrender and let go. And it was a lot of resistance to that, a lot of resistance. And... I remember asking guidance how I could share with you a way in a simple way that it would click for you to be able to create a defining moment of your flipping and flipping that switch into surrender. And guidance showed me at that time, the Dr. Seuss book of the fish out of water. And um, I rewrote that story that was two fish out of water and went in our session it was a very powerful session because that clicked with you. And you realized you didn't need to overfeed and you, the fish and you didn't need to cre keep recreating the tank and, and giving a little more space and a little more space. And it allowed you to realize that you've been giving yourself away. And I remember after the session, you responded to me saying that you realize now you need to stop chasing Nemo. That was a defining moment. Can you share and talk a little bit about that moment of where you were at that time? Yeah, I mean, I remember that session in particular because when you brought up that story, I, I remember that it, it put me in a really bad mood because I was like, so resistant I to know. thinking that, so resistant to thinking that I was doing anything wrong, right? Because one of my issues is that it's, I mean, it's kind of funny with the, with the twin journey is that when, you, when you're projecting on your twin, it's it's sort of strange because if you project on your twin, it really means that you're you're really looking at yourself because if your twin is you and you are them. Um, but I've had this habit of sort of saying, well, you know, A, B, and C, these are these are the twins' issues. They're not my issues. You know, they're the twins' yeah. problems, not Which my problems. Which most people out there are doing that. <laughs> right. And so um, when you first brought up the story about, you know, overfeeding the fish and, and giving too much and energetically holding on too tightly my first reaction was like no, that's not my problem i'm doing a perfect job <laughs> <laughs> you're taking really good care got, of that fish aren't you <laughs> right it's got to be the twins problem not mine and then when i was on my way home it sort of made sense it was like oh wait a second 
that is what I'm doing because I'm not letting this other person be free to make their own decisions and their own choices um, because I'm holding on with like, you know, a death grip, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it just, it just sort of made me kind of, it, and it reminded me immediately of, of Finding Nemo because it's one of my favorite movies and just thinking about how this poor little baby fish, even though he gets lost, I mean, the purpose of the journey was he just wants to be free from his really controlling dad. And what his dad learns in the process is that, you know, when little Nemo is free and when his dad is a little more relaxed, they actually have a much better relationship because they get along with one another so much better than when his dad's trying to control everything. Um, but I think that's one of the things about, be, about being controlling is that you, you don't always realize that you are being controlling. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's, we care about another person so much that in trying to take care of them or in trying to give them everything, we don't realize how some of those actions can be controlling for the other person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that to me from watching your journey, that was a very impactful moment because, you know, of course things have been high and low across that process and up and down as we all walk that journey. But that was the moment you suggest to the journey and to yourself ultimately yeah and in doing that that means like in when i say focus on self uh, that's kind of like the first aspect of saying and taking an accountability and that number one way to get across the bridge is focusing on self which you you took action for then you had to, yeah. learn how to trust yourself and that means that you got to release all those doubts and you know when as we do that that's helping us find our truth that's helping us be able to believe in the self and most importantly, like be able to activate inside of us. Like once we like realize what that truth is, then we can activate and tap into the truth and bring it into form and tap into like our spiritual gifts that enhances our ability and receptivity to go up in our consciousness to a new level to create more trust because we trust ourselves and then we can trust the process. So, and I even remember you asking me and mentioning, like, when am I going to get my gifts? When am I going to get my gifts, right? Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, can you share that phase of this journey with us today? Well, I mean, I think I've always been kind of intuitive since I was um, pretty young. But, you know, it's just one of those things where I never really thought much about it. So, I've always had this thing um, where the phone rings and before the phone rings, I know who, you know, who's calling and, um or I'll wake up and I'll be thinking of somebody and then 10 minutes later, they'll send me an email or whatever. That's happened to me my whole life. And I guess I never really thought much of it, but I brought it up to somebody once and they were like, oh, well, maybe you're intuitive or psychic. And I was like, really? Like this doesn't happen to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't really know, you know, but in terms of gifts, um, so basically that sort of in, intuitive ability has been heightened where, um, heightened immensely to the fact where I pick up energy very, very, very strongly, which also means I have to be a little bit careful about people I'm around because I'm very empathic so I can pick up on people's thoughts, and their feelings. Sometimes I can hear their voice um, or hear their internal thoughts. Um, you know, uh, clear audience is something that kind of came in overnight where if I am looking for a sign or a message from spirit or either or from the twin it'll come in for me it comes in through music so i'll have song lyrics that are playing in my head or maybe a portion of a um, of a play or a book or a poem or something that resonates with me and it's like okay clearly this is a message for me um and having really really strong higher self communication with the twin um, came in overnight on my birthday, actually in April of last year. Um, it just, it was something I had read about and it was something I was anticipating. And of course I was like waiting for it. Like, Oh, well, when's my twin's higher self going to start talking to me? Everyone else's twin does it. Why doesn't mine yeah. do it? You know, that sort yeah, of thing. I've had and, that feeling myself too. <laughs> yeah. And of course, like when I was thinking that it never happened and then it was on my birthday and all of a sudden I heard, my twin voice in my head and I thought, wow, I'm really losing my crap today, right? Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm like That's off my rocker now. That's what you ask for because you were basically asking for that and it's like you get what you ask right. for. Right, but it's, and also, but it was. also I really book about that because what, what you described there is like you had so much resistance in letting go 
the it was blocking your receptivity. That when we surrender that yeah. resistance, our receptivity goes up to tap into the higher frequencies to reach those levels of intuition that you're talking about. Go ahead. Right, and it was exactly like that. And so I first heard the twins' um, voice in my head, and I thought, okay, am I making this up? Like I, because here's another thing that I'm very good at. Um, doing accents and you know when i when, ever, ever since i was a kid i used to amuse the family by enacting out large parts of films and um tv shows and stuff and i would always do people's accents so i was like is this my internal dialogue like and i'm i'm, I'm just using his voice or you know, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> it was like because i can pretty much talk like him if i want to but, <laughs> but then it was it was too it was too and that's the thing when people was, talk about you're not crazy and like if you ask a question to yourself but out loud even but if you answer yourself, exactly that's and it's crazy and right <laughs> exactly and but the thing is that I, as as it continued for a couple of days i mean it was too specific the language was too it was there's no i'm not creative enough to make up hours and hours and hours of conversation um in that way. I mean, it was obviously him. It was obviously his higher self that was talking to me. It wasn't me making it up because I'm just, I'm not that creative, you know? Um, and also just the energy with it, his sense of humor, his jokes. There's no way that I could in my own head make any of that up. So it was obviously coming from him. Um, and it was probably the most magical day of my life because I'd been reading about it and I expecting it and wanting it but when it actually happened I just thought this is the most amazing feeling in the world because it's like being with somebody non-stop um, but they're physically not there but you're you're talking to them all the time and and you know since and and I have to say that it's, so it's been going on for almost a year and when I'm by myself um, alone in my office or my room or whatever we just have a conversation out loud as though he's actually there Mm -hmm. And I do that a lot. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been sort of caught a couple times by some folks who are like, oh, is everything okay? <laughs> like, well, actually, I'm not talking to myself. That's the thing. Um, I'm actually not talking to myself. <laughs> but, um, but I do do that on a normal basis. And I, and I think it's to important to do it. You really had to learn to trust in yourself and your own, like, yeah. with some doubts to be able to believe in you, to know that that was real for one. But how do you think you, to get to that level of that connection and it, it meant trusting you, how do you, what was the defining moment if you knew you trusted you? Um... I think part of it was like, I think when the higher self communication started for me, um, I was sort of like, okay, there's a lot of things you can make up. You can make up seeing license plates that have the number 1111 on them seven times a day, even though that's a little odd, but you could make it up if you want yeah. to. Um, you can make up seeing, you know, you can read into things like um, signs on billboards or, you know, uh, something falls in front of you in the grocery store and like, yeah, maybe it's for you. Maybe it's, you know, Bertrand Russell says the long arm of coincidence. Maybe it's the long arm of coincidence. But when the higher self communication starts, it's pretty difficult to deny that there's something going on here that hasn't happened with anyone else. Um, I've been connected to best friends. I've been connected to a spouse. I've been connected to my parents, but somehow I've never been able to have conversations on end in my head with them. Um, so there was something about it that just flipped and said, okay, this is real. This is actually happening. And that was the time where we started having um, huge sort of, I, will, I mean, it's hard. You can call it lucid dreaming or you can say sort of energetic connections or energetic work through, through the dream space, um, which how real they were for me and how lucid they were for me and how closely they followed whatever stage of the journey that we were in at that moment and whatever we were issues and challenges we were working through at that moment. Um, there's just no way to deny that there's something more to this than just, oh yeah, it's a soulmate or it's someone you get along with really well. There was obviously something more to it. Than and that. then this trusting and, yourself in that aspect, let's move to the next one of the trust that, that in itself gave you that, faith to trust in this process to where then what we have to do when we start really trusting in the process we're saying we're going to 
surrender and start practicing patience, which means we're going to have more tolerance. We're going to start to see more of the divine timing. We will follow the signs. Um, but ultimately, that means we got to stay out of our own way to keep moving forward. So in the process itself of practicing that patience and tolerance and timing, how, how does the, that fit into your journey? How, how do you think that, do you think what we just said with trusting yourself helps you trust in that process? And can you share with us how you kind of maneuvered through the process of trusting this process? And I know we're still doing it. So, you know, just share with us about how you trust in this process. I mean, I think it's hard. Um, that's the thing. I don't, it gets easier in some ways um, to trust the process, but it's, there's still parts of it that are hard. Um, and, you know, it's like, there's, there's certain things I trust now without a problem. So when the higher self communication comes in, I trust that without a problem. And um, if I dream something, I trust it without a problem, because I know that that's how spirit communicates with me. However, um, it can still be hard to trust why you're not having communication in the 3D with the twin. It can still be hard to trust why there's a greater purpose for that that you may not see. Or um, So I think it's kind of like a pendulum. It kind of goes back and forth. It's not like that you're always 100% in a space of trust. I don't think it's possible as, as, as humans who get affected by the things around them, the people, places, and things that are, that are in their environment. I don't really think it's possible for us always to maintain 110% space of trust. Um, you know, I think we, we, it, it falls a bit. There are things that happen, but you can, what's, what's important is to, is to recognize it and to say, okay, something's wrong with my energy. I'm falling out of trust. I'm doubting these things that I really shouldn't be doubting now. And then to just clear your energy and get right back up into the high vibration again, which is and something ultimately that, that means detaching from outcome too, you know, yeah. detaching from that outcome so you can stay at what's in front of you instead of staying focused on the outcome. Right, exactly. And then basically, too, that moving on to the next one with the trusting our guidance in that aspect, it's kind of like I talk about that as being three different kind of steps in that process of trusting our, trusting our guidance. Because ultimately, we're going up in the consciousness. and we're I, I talk about the tree, and I know you have heard me talk about this. I'm, I know I've talked about this on videos. Um, but in the ascension, it's like we're going up the tree. And as we go up the tree and we're going up in our enlightenment and we're going up in our consciousness, what is happening, we're getting greater conscious awareness. So as we create and elevate a trust meter in this process, so the more we trust, the more we can let go. And the more we let go, the more we can trust. And we continue to build ourselves up from a higher state of being and a higher state of perception. And if we have those downfalls we're talking about, we don't stay there as long and we clear it much faster. And that's that right. able to release that. But ultimately, after we've went up that tree and we're getting to the higher consciousness, then we are asked to go out on a limb. And to then that's when our guidance does back up because you gotta remember that this is our ultimate test here. We're talking about trust uh, in our journey. And it's those virtues that we signed up to master. And that's what we came here to master that to continue to evolve and to kind of complete our contract of our soul's evolution here. And that is when we are asked to in blind faith, go out on a limb and like basically not look down and to, and it is very fearful up there. You know, I think when you and I started working together, I was learning this steps myself because I almost remember us talking about this and talking about how, I'm going out on a limb and this is some new things I'm learning. And I remember really sharing this with you in the beginning, but where that is, is in the blind faith. And that is as human beings, we want to see things that are tangible. We want it in 3d and we've been living in the 5d for a long time, but this journey of this portal today of 922 is about bringing it into form and taking it from the 5d to the 3d. And depending upon where we are in our journey, we have to master these steps before you're going to do that, bringing it into form. And That's right. And I think, and I think that that bringing that, you know, it's in the five D. It's really easy to talk about things like the trust meter and having and being in full trust and things like that. But the thing is that you live in the three D still, right? Because you still have a job and a, and a mortgage and in a, or you know, you still have payments to make and you still have to make an income and do whatever. Um, so it's when the trust, uh, 
starts to fall when you when you think, well, if I take this risk, I mean, what what's what's going to happen in the real world? Um, yeah. Not in the five D where everything is great. Then, and that's where you have to be conscientious of your energy and sort of say, okay, that's the ego voice coming in. And what I've started to do is just let the ego have his um, have his day, you know, in the sun and okay, let the ego come up with every single argument against why you should do what you're currently doing and time it and just say, okay, you have three minutes to just let it out. Um, and after the three minutes, you're done. And then I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and do what I was planning on doing. Right. Because that's facing your fear. Well, it's also, it's giving acknowledgement to the ego, which is giving acknowledgement to our whole being. Anytime we try to cut that out and say we can't feel that, do that, have that, see that, believe that, you know, those kinds of things, we're cutting off a side of us that's creating the duality that's going to exist in us, and we have to have both sides. So it's sort of like yeah. taking that minute to feel that in a space of, okay, here's this. I'm going to hear you out. This is kind of like hearing the screaming little child inside and then saying, okay, you had your word. And I talk about that in my collapsing the mind, moving into the heart from head logic to heart language is the action stuff I help teach clients. And I know we've worked through some of that. Uh, but then as you do that, then you are now going into the back to the place like you're saying uh, and of saying, okay, I have faith in this process, which is basically the third portion of this having trust in your guidance is now that you went out on the limb, you're asked to leap off and Therefore, you're having faith in the process, and that really becomes unwavering faith. And, you know, and I've been experiencing, like, a lot of that over the last few months. I know you were kind of involved around the level and portal whenever I had some tests to be unwavering faith. And um, I know that you were involved in helping teach me some things, you know, even in the aspect of when Jesus was coming through and the things that I talked about with that merger of that energy. Um, but ultimately, what it we're doing and what you're saying is it's not going to go away the storm is going to exist it's finding the inner peace and stillness inside but we keep going through the turbulence that's helping us to test those templates and recreate the way we used to do things in a new way which is also what this 222 portal is about because we've been testing those templates and we've been given the test and now that we we're like you like this portal is about okay you're passing the test now we're going to move on forward and we're going to like anything that didn't serve your purpose now is going to have to no longer fit into this new vibration, the new earth, the new energy. Now you're being asked to do handle things the way your new self would be, but that's where you're getting out of your way, your own way, what I was saying. So that's you getting out of your own way. And then the kind of like where that steps into that number fifth, part is to get on through that you got to take action meaning you've got to leap off that tree but once you leap you'll never know if you can fly if you don't leap but it's like you gain your wings and then that's where you're aligning in your destiny that's where your rewards are and everything for your journey for you to show up to receive and that's where the things just start showing up now you've recently taken some really big leaps in this aspect and you're seeing and reaping those rewards. Can you share with us a little bit about that portion of this journey? Yeah. Um, I definitely took some leaps. I mean, I was uh, guided to um, walk out of, a, you know, put, put, in, put an end to or, or call into completion um, a 18-year uh, marriage, um, which has been with a soulmate and has been absolutely joyful and wonderful and, and everything except there's been a disconnect for a long time and it was a disconnect that neither of us were kind of brave enough to talk about or to bring up because there was a lot of complacency there and it was this feeling of, well, it's not, <coughs> excuse me, it's not, um, it's not perfect, but, you know, we don't argue and it's, it's not as bad as, as some people have it and that sort of thing. I mean, we, we really didn't have any problems per se, but there just was a sort of disconnect on an emotional level and intellectual level for a very long time. Um, so I was told to, you know, I had got guidance that I needed to bring that up and have that conversation. And, and it's very difficult because in general, I'm the type of person who doesn't really like conflict. And I also come from a family where my mother and my father are definitely two people who will do anything on the 
planet to avoid conflict. Um, to the point where they will just deny things and make things up, do whatever, <laughs> as long as they don't have to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, growing up in that environment, it's like these things seep into your bones and they seep into your marrow without even realizing it. You can grow up and you can say, I don't want to be like them because I know how they avoid conflict and confrontation and they'll do anything. I'm not going to be that person. But then when it comes down to it and you're faced with that decision, you realize how similar you really are to your parents and the things that they've done. Um, and I had to make a decision that I wasn't going to be my mother and I wasn't going to be my father and I wasn't going to be these people and I was going to have this conversation no matter how difficult it was. And so I did. I initiated the conversation and it um, didn't go over very well. Um, it brought a lot of instability into the home. It was very up and down for about three or four months. There was a lot of lashing out where I was blamed for bringing up these issues and these problems that we had. And I was blamed for initiating the separation. And, um, you know, my spouse didn't really want to take accountability or responsibility for any of it. And it was, it was a very rocky road. And I just held steady and held steady and said, okay, you know, if I'm supposed to go in another direction, then make it happen. And if I'm not supposed to go in another direction, then give me, give me a sign. Um, and the sign was that um, I had planned to move out of my house at a certain time. In my mind, I had made a timeline and said, you know, mm -hmm. by the middle of the summer, I will have enough money saved and I'll be able to do this and I'll be able to do that. And that's the perfect time for me to move Yeah, out. <laughs> um, that's how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, and it's also because I'm very um, organized and methodical. I'm very OCD. I make lists for my lists, and then those have lists, you know, so, and, and I like to check boxes and highlight things and colors. I mean, I'm very OCD. So um, this was a plan that I made, and it was, of course, color-coordinated and had no areas to kind of check off and stuff, because that's, that's just me. It's <laughs> who I am. Um, and uh, I said, okay. Well, you know, if you That's want me, let's make I, a deal. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, so this was my little perfect plan. I'm just going to happen in June, and that's going to give me X amount of months to save this money, and then, and then I'll, you know, I in May I'm going to sell these things, and in, in April I'm going to sell these things, so that by the time June comes around, I'll have everything ready, and and oh, you know, I'll have like four days off work if I do it on this particular week, and I have it all planned. Um, and I very clearly got guidance. Um, it was in the middle of January, randomly. It was, it was my, favorite, um, my favorite person to get guidance, my favorite energy to get guidance from is Archangel Michael because he's always so tough with me. And he said, um, you're going to move now. And I said, like, hell I am. I'm not moving now. I'm moving in June. And he was like, no, you're moving now. And I was like, no, I'm not. And he was like, yes, you are. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> he was like, yes, you are. And I said, <laughs> and I remember having this very petulant conversation with him and saying, well, fine, if you want me to move now, then you do it. And he was like, we will. And I said, fine. And he said, fine. And then I <laughs> just went on like that. Um, and literally 48 hours later, um, a friend of mine at work came to me and said, hey, I was driving to work today and I saw a sign in this apartment building. And, and I said, I, listen, I don't even look in that neighborhood because I can't afford anything in that neighborhood by like $800. Like, well, let's just go there and see. And, you know, let's just, I was like, what's the point? I can't afford anything in that building. I know that building. I've looked in that building. Um, and we drove after work and went to this building that I've looked at a hundred times and I can't afford anything in that building by about $800. And the property manager says, well, actually, we have an apartment um, that is on special, and it was in my price range, um, except there was a catch. In order for me to get that price and to get that price for a whole year, I had to move in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like, okay. Um, and I remember looking up at Archangel Michael and saying, you weren't kidding, were you, when you said you're moving now? <laughs> Yeah, like, I want to say something all right. really quick before you pick up. Um, and I remember your planning of different things and timelines you were setting up. Probably around the October before the 11-11 portal, you were bringing that up. And I remember saying, I don't think it's going to be that long. And, yeah, I remember. Um, and I remember like that resistance and, okay, no, it's going to be this and I'm going to do this. And I know you were hitting one of those resistance again. And then I also kind of like in that, that space went um, – 
as you had kind of like started letting go, it's kind of like, I think you, it's like one of those walls we talk about where you repeat that pattern, but yet you yeah. got to go through it to get that new awakening from a higher consciousness of going, oh, okay, I got to let go again, right? So you're repeating the whole cycle again to let go. And yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, it was like, okay, in order to get this special, which is, which is pretty much the only way that I can afford it, like you have to take possession of this apartment in seven days. And I was like, really? Seven days? And she's like, yeah, seven days. Okay. Seven days. <laughs> like, yes, okay. Um, and so, you know, I haven't packed a thing. I haven't sold anything that I'm supposed to sell on Craigslist. I haven't done anything that I'm supposed to do. And I just said, okay. Um, so of course I was like, well, give me a sign, you know, this is the place for me because I don't, I mean, it's one thing to, to, it's one thing to trust, but it's another thing to, you know, take a, take a leap out of an open window and fall on the Exactly. And that's the part of heavy traffic. saying that take action. You have to take action. To, you can get this far, but if you don't take the action, leaping out of that tree, this is where people are getting stuck. So this is why I want to really focus on this spot because this is where people are getting really stuck. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're fine. So, um, so I said, I said, okay, give me a sign. And um, the sign that I got was, it was, it was a really funny sign, actually. And I don't think I have told you this. Um, so I got this, this while I was standing in the apartment, I got this voice and it said in my head, um, ask to look at the floor plan. And I said, well, I'm standing, physically standing here. So why would I ask to look at the floor plan? That's like what you do when you're not physically in the apartment. You know? <laughs> um, and so it's like, ask to look at the floor plan. And I was like, all right, this is really weird. So I looked at the property manager and I said, would you mind if I look at the floor plan, even though I'm physically in the apartment right now? And, and the person said, oh, oh, sure. Okay. I have to go down to my office to get it and went down to the office to get it. And, and I said, the reason I want to look at the floor plan is I just want to look at the measure, you know, the size of the room because I want to see if I can fit my furniture in here or whatever. And so it's like, okay. And um, as soon as I looked at the floor plan, the, 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 the size of the living room was 11 by 11. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And I don't think I told you that before. Yeah. Um, so that was my sign that I had to, that this was the place. Um, and there were five or six other miracles that happened right after that. So the special that they were running um, has, you know, so it means that my rent is basically in exactly my price range um, all the way for a year. Um, it had every single thing that I had listed because I had looked at apartments for a while and I didn't like anything. And I finally had written a manifestation letter and said, this is every single thing that I want. And Archangel Michael actually came in while I was in the apartment and he was like, is everything on your list checked? <laughs> I was like, yes, I think it is. He's like, good. <laughs> and so, you know, I basically stopped bugging me now for, you know, I want this and I want this, but literally every single thing um, that was on my list of like, these are the things that I absolutely need to have, want to have in my new place were, were there. Um, I was approved within 24 hours, even though normally it takes like a week for them to do the approval. Um, there were, I had extra things that I couldn't fit in the apartment. It turns out this building comes with a storage unit, which is absolutely free, which is unheard of in the area where I live. I mean, just, just, just strange, miraculous things. Um, I was very, very, very concerned about how to transport my books. I have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of books. And, I was planning to sell a lot of them and I didn't know how I would transport them. And then all of a sudden the very next day I came to work and for some reason, my um, colleagues came into my office and said, Oh, you know, we have these extra bookshelves and we were going to send them back, but we just thought, why don't we put them in your office? And Hey, don't you have a bunch of books that you should be probably put here instead of, you know, having to uh, keep them in your home all the time. And I'm like, yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, I have just the amount of books that will fit on these three brand new books. So, you know, just, um, just one thing after another that makes you sort of realize that like, okay, uh, I'm obviously doing something right. I'm obviously, you know, in alignment. Um, but that's the thing with it is that it's, it, you still have to do some work to keep your energy there because once you do take that leap, and I did in fact move in under seven days and I packed up everything and 
um, I had this moment of absolute panic because I only looked at the place once before I signed the lease. And then when I looked at it a second time, when I got the keys, I remember walking around and I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Because this, I literally was like, what have I done? I have lost my mind. I have lost my mind. Like between an archangel and my twin's alleged higher self, like I have just jumped out of a giant window into a tiny apartment where I can't even fit my luggage in here. Like a skyscraper. (laughs) Right. I'm like, I can't even fit my luggage in here. Like, I don't know what (laughs) the hell I was thinking. Um, And like, who would I tell? Well, Archangel Michael told me to do it. And my twin's higher self. And I was like, (laughs) I've really lost my mind. I've really lost my mind. And I was like, nothing's going to fit in here. And I had a panic attack. Um, and then I just said, okay, fine, forget it. And I said, all right, make it like Mary Poppins suitcase. You know, Mary Poppins, I don't know if you ever watched that movie, yeah. but I watched it a lot when I was a kid. And she opens up her bag and she pulls out a lamp and she pulls out like a <laughs> sofa and, you know, every, her, her potted plants, like everything comes out of that one little bag. I said, fine, just make this apartment like Mary Poppins suitcase, you know? <laughs> and when I moved in, the funniest thing was that I had all these things and I was like, I'm going to have to add extra hanging space in the closet and nothing's going to fit in the bedroom and all. I have so much space in that apartment. I can't even believe how everything fits and there's room for more. Wow. It's the weirdest thing. I was convinced that my clothes would not fit in that closet. Not only do my clothes fit, but I have like, space to hang like 50 more items, which I don't want, but still. You know, that's um, a good point because that's where we get stuck. That's, that's a good point. Cause I talk about <coughs> how we make our shifts, you know, as to cleaning out the closet and yeah. you know, like we do that with our mind. We assume and we get a perception, like a false illusion and the false illusion could be the block. And you're saying that like you, you thought based on certain parameters of these illusions that it wouldn't necessarily work. And that was a very simple level, but that's what we do on a big scale too. And so we have to let go of those illusions of what looks like what's in front of us and take the action and get in alignment with that space before we make our truest um, projection of it. Otherwise, we might be just blocking what it is we're supposed to be doing because, oh, you know, right off the bat, we make excuses, what I'm saying. You know, it's true. And it's like, I called in all the archangels. I remember I was saying to them, I was like, I don't know if you guys are any good at interior decorating, but you're going to have to be, um, cause I'm going to need some help. And I get into this place. <laughs> and so I just remember, you know, asking, okay, how should I rearrange my, how should I arrange my, be- these are the things I want in my bedroom. Where should I put them basically? And they would come in and they'd say, no, you know, put the bookshelf over here and move this thing over here and you'll see you'll have so much space. And Okay, and so I spent last weekend rearranging it the way they told me to, and lo and behold, I now have space for the reading chair that I wanted that I was convinced I couldn't fit, um, you know, and so I have no furniture in there at the moment, which is fine, but um, I have some floor cushions, and I'm just going to take my time to, I, I'm actually kind of loving not having any furniture in there. Um, yeah. It's just nice to have empty space, um, but it's funny that I, so everything that I've asked them, you know, is like, well, how should I, where should I put this? And they'll tell you. And, and, and one of the in, very interesting things is that I absolutely adore cooking. And this place has probably the largest kitchen that any apartment in this, in this area, in this, in this uh, vicinity has. Um, and because of that, I had to sacrifice some living space. And, and I was like, I asked them about that. I said, you know, this living space is kind of small. I don't know how I'm going to be, how, how I'm going to fit the couch I want and stuff well, we gave you the beautiful kitchen because you love to cook. And I said, well, this is true. But the funniest <laughs> thing is that I do love to cook. It's one of my favorite things. And I was thrilled when I saw this kitchen. It's just perfect. And the most hilarious thing is that since I moved in there, I have become like a bachelor frat boy. And like, I haven't even bought cooking oil. I'm literally eating like every frozen food item that there is available in the grocery <laughs> And using paper plates and plastic silverware, which I have never done in my life (laughs) because I'm very, very, I'm way too much into etiquette to ever do anything like that. I would die before I ever used a plastic fork or a (laughs) paper plate, but I'm literally doing all of those things. And it's kind of hilarious because I'll come home and I'll be, 
I could cook something or I could eat this frozen burrito on my paper plate with my plastic fork. <laughs> <laughs> that's another layer. Of go, isn't it? And that's the freedom. It really is. But it really is because, because to be free. Yeah, it really is. And so it's just, I, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm, I never thought I would do things like that. And I was telling my mom and she was like, you have never, ever use plastic silverware or paper plates and you don't eat frozen pre-made food and I was like well, apparently I do now <laughs> you know so. what you're describing here I want to kind of share with this timeline that you thought you were on versus like your guides that knew you were on is you yeah sign up for this journey ultimately we're Scott describing the rebirth here and once we're pregnant there's no going back and getting you know the baby has to come out right so we signed up yeah. for this journey and we're rebirthing to our newest, highest version of ourself. And there is no turning back. And we signed up for these timelines. And the more you fight the resistance, the more struggle you're going to create for yourself. But when you let go and you move into alignment and see this is where this 2222 portal fits in today is closing the door to the past. And your guides and angels we're directing you in an aspect you could not go through this portal in the old way old way you see what i'm saying you had to let that yeah. go to come through this portal to reap these rewards and this is where we're coming into this portal of the rewards are here we we're being asked just for taking the risk yes we've been doing, doing all this work but it's if you're staying in this resistance now if you're fighting this process now it's because you're choosing to it's not because the energy in your destiny is just sitting on the other side of that door waiting on you. And you're, right. you're going, it's going to get stronger and stronger. And I'm seeing people wake up like flies to like this rapid energy that's coming in. Even yesterday, I had three people of my past contact me out of nowhere at random. They're talking about their wake ups. And then they're like, you're the only person I know to go to. Like, this is happening to me. This is every one of them. And there are people that's been in my life for some of them, like, well, some the whole life and a couple, you know, for like 10 and 25, 30 years. And um, so people are like um, rapidly ascending, rapidly like awakening where some of us have been on this journey for a very long time. But <coughs> the point being is, is if you are resisting this portal, it's up to you to choose to, are you going to stay in your old ways? Or are you going to say yes to the new way? And, you know, that's the point of this risk versus reward. You're going to have to take some risk in order to reap your rewards, but that, you know, you will be rewarded. And that's why, you know, bringing Samantha here was really good about this whole journey of what we're talking about here. She has been doing this as a lot of us are, but I felt like, you know, it was a really good example of showing that bridge, you know, and so, um, and, you know, I want to congratulate you. And like I said in the beginning, I'm very honored to have watched you blossom into this transition of this shift. And, you know, I can feel your guide saying, welcome home. In fact, I sent you a message around the time that because I got that message for you that said, welcome home. I remember that now as I say that. And, I had yesterday myself and two clients in sessions that literally went through these heart expansions and literally dug up the graves of the past. And I'm talking literally, and what I've even been going through personally in the last couple of weeks has been the toughest of this entire um, journey, but needing to be forced to go there because it won't be supported in myself physically to hang on to any cords of, I'm talking past of even past lives. and you know, child, baby, when I had the burn and all kinds of things, but those things can't be supported in this new, this new energy. So that's why we're have hitting like really the darkest demons of this journey during this time frame right now. And, um, I invite and encourage anyone that's listening to this to definitely like take that leap of faith and is starting to say yes to this process, surrender, so you can trust in yourself so you can move across that journey close the door to your past and reap your rewards and so um with that being said do you, any final messages that you would share with somebody about on this journey about um just a message or what you would like to say to them if somebody out there that's going through the struggle that we're talking about here right now um just that you know 
it's the entire thing has for me, I mean, and uh, one thing I've realized is that everybody's story is really individual. Mm-hmm. And it's it's very unhelpful at some point in the story to start comparing yourself with other people's tomb journey. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's it's not useful and it's not um it doesn't mean anything if somebody was in separation from their twin for one week and you've been in separation for one year. It doesn't make it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that there's something wrong with your twin. Um, it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean that you're not you're not working hard enough or you're not releasing or clearing that you don't know the purpose for it. And there's no levels here of you know somehow your twin relationship is on a lower level from somebody else because things are not manifesting in the three d as fast as they could or or whatever it doesn't it doesn't I've learned that it's a very individual journey and it's a very individual uh, process and it's not necessarily helpful to do those things, number one. Number two, the entire shift and change and everything that has happened for me um, has happened while in complete uh, separation in the 3D (coughs) from my twin. Um, And I think that's been an important part of it, although it's not really separation because the higher self-communication is there nonstop. And has only grown, um, and has only sort of gotten, you know, uh, stronger. And that's one of the things with, I think, um, with releasing is that when you release deeply held beliefs, I don't think they, they, you know, there's always another layer. There's always another layer. There's always another layer. Even when you think that you're done, and it's gotten to the point where my twin's higher self is really good at letting me know kind of a few minutes before something's about to release that something's about to release. He's really good at it. And he's also really good at kind of spitting it out and just waiting for it to pass because this is a funny story, but something happened a couple of days ago where out of nowhere, I just, and we were having a conversation in, in 5B and I just said something to him where I lashed out and he looked at me sort of shocked and was like, oh, wait, are we back here again? I thought we had cleared this like three months ago. <laughs> no, I guess we didn't. And, and then he's like, oh, okay, I didn't realize that we were still dealing with this one. And I said, I, I didn't realize it either. And I got kind of mean and, well, you know, you have no right to judge me if I'm still dealing with it and I'm still dealing with it, you know? And then um, I turned around and started making my coffee. And in the time it made me to make my coffee, like I had already released, let it go, it was gone. And he was all kind of, quiet and said um are we still dealing with that or is it is it gone now and I was like no it's gone it's it's gone and, and he said well, that was really fast that only took like a minute and a half and he said, well, it is this, well obviously we're, we're actually you know, that's the thing with this time frame where I'm saying people are rapidly awakening the pieces yeah that need, those layers we're needing to go through are rapidly releasing too you know they're coming right up and too. yeah and just the fact that it happened so um it happened so quickly and you know it was like okay it was done it was here and it was done and um and it was gone and it was so an indication that um yes another layer of it had to be released but it wasn't so deep at this point that it took four days you know it just it was just a couple minutes and it was done um so i guess what i would say to people is um don't expect that just because you make the changes and take the leap um that everything shifts overnight with your twin. Your twin may not be where you are. They may not be as ready as you are. They may, they may have other things to take care of um, and do in their own journey and their own path. And so just focus on the good things that are happening for you and for your life. And that's the energy that will um, help your dynamic anyway. Wow, very beautiful. Very beautiful. I want to thank you for showing up here today, sharing your journey with us. And um, I am very, very honored. So thank you again. Well, thank you. I'm so, very um, with everyone then, um, I wish you a happy 2222 portal day and um, welcome home. Welcome to the new energy. And be sure to um, check out the Uh, Links below, like, comment, share the shine, 
May you always continue to face your fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Namaste.